We're going to take a first look at the Broadway Limited SD70 Ace on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. In a recent video, I did an unboxing and review of Broadway Limited's new InScale ES44 AC. I found them to be great little locomotives with a nice level of detail, but good and sturdy for those of you who like to operate and who handle your locomotives a fair amount. Well, today we're going to look at another new InScale locomotive from Broadway Limited. It's their SD70 Ace. And again, we're going to be unboxing and taking a look at the details on this locomotive and also bringing it out to the layout and see how it looks and how it sounds. Now, the SD70 Ace prototype was built from 2004 to 2014. It was the direct successor of the very successful SD70 Mac, but the early versions had tier two uh, em emissions compliance and had 4,300 horsepower. A later version of the SD70 Ace had 4,500 horsepower and met tier three standards. So these were very much at home on the rails from 2004 on. Even today, you see many of them on the rails. Now the locomotives I'm going to be showing you today were provided by Broadway Limited to my friends at Model Railroad News who passed them on to me to do this review for you. That being said, I'm going to give you an honest review and tell you exactly what I see, what I hear, and what I think. So with all of that said, let's head on over to the workbench. We'll get one of these opened up and see what it looks like. Take a moment to check out our sponsor, Midwest Model Railroad. They have a great line of model railroad equipment and supplies and some of the best customer service around. Their website has a real-time inventory system, they offer some of the best prices in model railroading, and they ship in one business day. Check them out at MidwestModelRR.com, link in the description. Well, here we are with our brand new Broadway Limited SD70 Ace. And today we're looking here, uh, uh, unboxing specifically, uh, the Norfolk Southern version, uh, number 1112. Uh, a little information about this locomotive, similar to the ES44AC that I reviewed recently. Uh, it is, of course, equipped with the Paragon 3 uh, operating and sound system, which is uh, uh, operates both on DC and DCC, uh, and is also equipped with the Rolling Thunder sound, uh, which is a uh, an enhanced sound system. I'm, I'm actually, uh, again, going to be doing a review of the Rolling Thunder uh, sound system uh, in the near future, and uh, I'll be sure to link that at the end of this video when I do. Uh, this uh, locomotive, the, the, the sound portion of this locomotive has 16-bit sound, uh, has all the sounds that you've come to expect with uh, a DCC sound decoder, uh, along with tons of configurable sound effects, including both ambient sounds and radio chatter for a variety of locations and situations, uh, as well as uh, various uh, bells and horns, uh, coupler uh, sounds, uh, startup sound is really cool, And but we'll take a listen to a few of those. Uh, not all of them, but a few of them out at the layout when we get out there. Uh, as far as operations are concerned, this locomotive is recommended for nine and three quarter inch radius curves at the minimum. Uh, and also, again, BLI uh, equips their locomotives with actual micro trains couplers, which is a huge plus for a lot of people. This uh, particular locomotive, uh, the MSRP, is $249.99. Uh, but I searched online and found it for as low as 199 online, so you can you can find it at a little bit of a discount from that. So there, there's some basic information part ahead of taking a look, but we'll open the box up here and actually take a look today. Uh, again, packaged very nicely, jewel case as you typically expect with in-scale locomotives often. Uh, and then, of course, wrapped in this protective soft plastic inside. Again, uh, I'll show you this in case you didn't see the, uh, the ES44 video. Underneath all of the packaging, uh, 
uh, not really a, a, an owner's manual, but there is a little card that has a uh, little information about the locomotive uh, on one side. Uh, but the other side, it has actually all of your function keys for various sounds. So you'll want to hold on to that so you'll have that, have that reference. Um, I'll pull it out here. And, uh, of course, as we have come to expect so often with these we've got this little bit of foam that just helps to protect the handrails from getting damaged in shipping and uh, just going to use a toothpick to kind of work that out and I'll turn it over here and do the same on the other side so we can see the lettering and uh, just see what we have here now looking at at this particular locomotive uh, I'm going to start off with the sides here. Now, one of the things that I notice, uh, this locomotive uh, has uh, extended sunshades on it. Uh, that's one thing that, at, at least the ones that I had, the ES44 ACs did not have the sunshades. This has sunshades. That's a nice detail. Again, on the sides, uh, the, the radiator grills are, look really, really nice. The lettering is crisp. And tons of, of little safety labels and, and, uh, and caution uh uh, symbols across the locomotive and again they are very very crisp as well um, I, I'm not going to pull out an extreme magnifier because I know the standard today and I know BLI I know if you get extreme magnification those are actually re readable they're actually legible which is cool um, you'll never read them on the layout but but it's it, but it's a, a neat feature anyway it just goes to show the level of detail that uh, that you have here now I'm noticing on this particular locomotive uh, it th does have some nice uh, you know piping detail and such uh, below the 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 walkway on the es44 some of that was separately applied and this mostly seems to be molded on but it still looks it still looks good I mean that again at a glance from the distance you're going to look at it on the layout you, you can barely tell the difference I do like the fact that we've got the nice uh, red details on the, the sight glass on the the fuel tanks got the safety striping on the steps uh, again does not have the, the the safety paint on the handrails up the, the walkways but that's true on almost all in scale locomotives these days so that's just uh, and kind of the way that typically is. Got nice detail around the windows. I, I can't really see inside, uh, but I'm going to assume that this has a detailed interior. The ES44 AC did. Uh, it's hard to see until you get it on the layout and actually get the, the interior lights on to see exactly what's in there. So we'll look at that out on the layout. Um, I'm going to turn it up this way so you can see the front end and um, uh, nice uh, number boards with the legible uh, numbers there. Uh, it's got some, some uh, uh, windshield wipers here, and I'm trying to tell if they are separately applied. Uh, they actually look like they are maybe a separately applied detail because they connect up here onto the, the, the front of the, uh, of the hood here. Um, the filler caps here on the front. Now, now one difference that I'm seeing uh, here is this locomotive, it looks like all of the uh, grab irons are molded on. With the ES44 AC, some of those were actually separately applied. Not all of them, but, but many of them were separately applied details. So, uh, also this one has MU hoses, but doesn't have the little painted silver um, uh, 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 couplers on, on the ends of those. Uh, you, you could paint those silver. It looks like the details there, they're just not painted on these. You'd have to paint those yourself. Um, uh, looking at, well, let's look at the other side here before we go to the roof. And again, similar to the side that we saw, got the nice uh, uh, crisp lettering, um, got the, 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 the filler uh, cap and the uh, sight glass painted red here, the um, air tanks de detail here. And, and again, here we have uh, some, some decent detail underneath. It, it's, it looks like it's mostly molded on. Some of this may actually be Looks like it is separately applied. Uh, side trucks have, uh, our truck uh, side frames have, have nice detail on them as well. Uh, one thing I am noticing on this particular locomotive uh, that maybe is not quite as nice as the ES44 AC was, uh, of course, this has, has fans uh, for, the, for the radiators and the dynamic, dynamic brake. 
Whereas the uh, ES44AC has, you know, the big grills. Uh, the, the grills on the ES44 were all see-through and uh, were very nice detail. These are, these are molded on uh, details. Uh, they're not see-through. You don't see the fan blades. So not, 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 not quite as nice there, maybe. And I'm also not really seeing a lot. I see a little bit of bolt detail. Uh, but, but seems to lack maybe just a little bit of detail on, on the roof. Uh, but but all that being said, it's still a very very nice uh, locomotive, very very nicely detailed. Just a little different in some areas than uh, than the uh, than the ES44 AC was. Uh, I do like the, the 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 texture that you have on the the walkways. That that grading, that non-slip texture, looks really really good on these. Uh, your your antennas here that that stand out because they're white uh, against the black on this particular uh, unit. And uh, we'll see how that varies as we get out to the layout and see the other unit, which I didn't mention. It happens to be a Union Pacific uh, unit that we'll be uh, looking at on the layout as well of this, uh, this, this same locomotive. Uh, let's take a look at the rear here. And uh, again, pretty much as we saw in the front, it's got the MU hoses, but they're all black, uh, molded on grab irons. Uh, but we do see that the, the, the painted on uh, numbers and, of course, the, uh, the, the, the taillights there, ditch lights front and rear. And I know that those are independently operating ditch lights. Um, and then uh, we'll let you take a, a look at that uh, whenever we get out to the layout. Overall, detail wise, I'm just I'm seeing a, a pretty nice locomotive. Here is speed step one going forward. And speed step two. You're going to notice that it jerks just a little bit, a little jump. Speed step three. In between each speed step at slow motion four and five. As it, as it comes programmed out of the box, it comes programmed with a top voltage set at 250, uh, the bottom voltage set at one, and the mid voltage set at 100. And with those settings in place, you get a little bit of that jerkiness uh, in the steps. Uh, again, I'm using 28 speed steps on uh, my particular locomotive here. I, I wanted to see how adjusting uh, the speed table would impact this and so I adjusted just the top voltage and mid voltage on the other unit that I have which is a Union Pacific unit 
Okay, we'll go through the startup sequence here uh, just to get this locomotive up and going. And as it goes through that, I'll just let you know, I, what I did was I adjusted the top voltage on this locomotive to uh, a setting of 100 and the mid voltage to a setting of 30. That way you get the nice uh, slow end, uh, smooth speed on the low end and then that picks up to a greater speed on the top end. Also gives me a top end uh, speed that is a more realistic prototypical speed. I also programmed the acceleration on this particular locomotive, uh, the momentum to a level of uh, three and the deceleration to a level of two which gives me a little bit of that momentum without enough that I, I feel like I'm out of control of my locomotive. So now let's get a, a look and see how the slow speed motion is on this locomotive from step to step. Forward speed step one, and then we'll move to speed step two, and you see still a little bit of a, of a jump there, but mu much better. And then the speed step three, you see much, much smoother. And then four, and then five, uh, with the exception of that little bit of a jump between speed steps one and two, it really made a difference in improving the uh, slow speed motion of this locomotive. Note the alternate flashing of the ditch lights whenever the horn is blown. And you saw they continue to flash after the horn quits blowing for a few seconds and then go back to full on. I love that feature whenever you have uh, independently operated ditch lights. One of the truly nice features about a situation like this where I've got matched locomotives, same manufacturer, same mechanism, and the same brand decoder, and in this case exactly matching decoders, is that it makes speed matching and consisting really, really easy. And in this case, uh, I went ahead and changed the uh, mid voltage, top voltage, acceleration, deceleration on the Norfolk Southern locomotive to match what I had on the Union Pacific. And I want you to notice uh, just how perfectly their speed matched. Here's notice the, the difference between them. And if I move them at speed step one, you're gonna see they move just perfectly in synchronization. Speed step two, three, four, five, just perfectly synchronized. Uh,
Now, one thing I haven't mentioned is that these sound decoders are designed to respond to pulling a load so that they give a higher sound of the engine revving in response to a load. I want you to listen for that. And this last run by, which by the way, includes both of my SD70 Aces and both of my ES44 ACs all lashed together in one consist, pulling a cut of 31 cars. Now, I want to share with you a couple of closing thoughts that didn't get mentioned during the review itself. First, if you saw my video about the ES44AC, you know I mentioned that I thought the cab lights were extremely bright. On the SD70 Ace, the headlights are a much more realistic brightness. I think this is a great improvement on this particular locomotive. Secondly, the sound volume as it comes out of the box is quite loud, especially compared to other sound decoders that I have experienced. Now, the sound volume is adjustable. You can adjust each individual sound individually, or you can adjust all of the sound with a master volume. But that may be something that you want to play with if you have several sound locomotives motives on your layout, or if you have people operating your layout, as these can be rather overwhelming because of their loud volume. Third, and finally, each one of these locomotives of both types took a fair amount of fiddling in order to get them to run exactly the way I wanted them to. I had to adjust several of the CVs, as I mentioned in this particular video, and in the process of doing that, each one of the locomotives, I had to factory reset at least one time. Now, that being said, some of that fiddling took just a little bit of time, but ultimately, when I, after I had spent 20 minutes or so with each locomotive getting those settings set the way I wanted them to, I came up with locomotives that ran great, and I was very impressed with the way they ran once I got those settings dialed in. So just be aware of those things as you consider these particular locomotives, but I do have to say that I'm rather impressed with them. Again, they have a nice level of detail. They're very sturdy and durable, so they're a good compromise between detail and that durability for those of you who really like operations or who handle your locomotives a fair amount. Well, if you enjoyed this video, you'll want to make sure and check out my review of the ES44AC, which you'll find in the link in the corner of your screen right now. Also, be sure and check out the description down below where you'll find links to Model Railroad News, as well as my Amazon page, my Amazon Pick of the Week, and my Micromark promo code, and lots of other great links in the description. Hope you'll take a few moments to check those out. Well, if you want more Model Railroad content right now, check out the links on your screen. And be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great Model Railroad videos, and I look forward to seeing you then. Tim, Lizzie?